I took a step nearer. Is this here table from my mate Bill? He acts with a kind of leer. I told him I did not know his mate Bill, and this was for a person who stayed in our house whom we call the captain. Well, said he, my mate Bill will be called the captain, as like as not. He has a cut on one cheek and a mighty pleasant way with him, Ple particularly in drink, has my mate Bill. We'll put it for argument like that your captain has a cut on one cheek, and we'll put it, if you like, that the cheek's the right one. Ah, well, I told you. Now, is my mate Bill in this here house? I told him he was out walking. Which way, Sonny? Which way is he gone? And when I pointed out the rock and told him how the captain was likely to return, and how soon, and answered a few other questions. Ah, said he, this'll this will be as good as drink to my mate Bill. The expression of his face as he said these words was not as all pleasant. And I had my own reasons for thinking that the stranger was mistaken, even supposing he meant what he said. But it was no affair of mine, I thought. And besides, it was difficult to know what to do. The stranger kept hanging about just inside the inn door, peering around the corner like a cat waiting for a mouse. Once I stepped out myself into the road, but he immediately called me back, and as I did not obey quick enough for his fancy, a most horrible change came over his tallowy face, and he ordered me in with an oath that made me jump. As soon as I was back again, he returned to his former manner, half fawning, half sneering, patted me on the shoulder, told me I was a good boy, and he had taken quite a fancy to me. I have a son of my own, he said he, as like you as two blocks, and he's all the pride of my art. But the great thing for boys is discipline. Sonny disciplined. Now, if you had sailed along Bill, you wouldn't have stood there to spoke to two, two twice, not you. That was never Bill's way, nor the way of, su of Sitch as sailed with him. And here, sure enough, is my mate Bill, with a spy glass under his arm. Bless his old heart, to be sure. You and me, just go back into the parlor, Sonny, and get behind the door, and we'll give Bill a little surprise. Bless his art, I say again. So saying, the stranger backed along with me into the parlor and put me behind him in the corner so that we were both hidden by the open door. I was very uneasy and alarmed. As you may fancy, and it rather added to my fears, to observe that the stranger was certainly frightened himself. He cleared the hilt of his cutlass and loosened the blade into the sheath. And all the time we were waiting there, he kept swallowing as if he felt what we used to call a lump in the throat. At last in strode, the captain slammed the door behind him, without looking to the right or left, and marched straight across the room to where his breakfast awaited him. Bill, said the stranger in a voice that I thought he had tried to make bold and big. The captain spun around on his heel and fronted us. All the brown had gone out of his face, and even his nose was blue. He had the look of a man who sees a ghost, or the evil one, or something worse, if anything can be, and upon my word I felt sorry to see him all in the moment turn so old and sick. Come, Bill, you know me. You know an old shipmate, Bill. Surely, said the stranger. The captain made a sort of gasp. Black dog, said he. And who else, returned the other, getting more at his ease. Black dog as ever was. Come for to see his old shipmate, Billy, at the Admiral Benbow Inn. 
Ah, Bill. Bill, we have seen a sight of times, us two, since I lost them two talons, holding up his mutilated hand. Now look here, said the captain. You run me down. Here I am. Well, then, speak up. What is it? That's you, Bill, returned Black Dog. You're in the right of it, Billy. I'll have a glass of rum from this dear child here, as I've took such a liking to. And we'll sit down, if you please, and talk square like old shipmates. When I returned with the rum, they were already seated on the either side of the captain's breakfast table, black dog next to the door, and sitting sideways so as to have one eye on his old shipmate, and one, as I thought, on his retreat. He bade me go and leave the door wide open. None of your keyholes for me, Sonny, he said, and I left them together and retired into the bar. For a long time, though, I certainly did my best to listen. I could hear nothing but a low gabbling. But at last, the voices began to grow higher, and I could pick up a word or two, mostly oaths from the captain. No, 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 and an end of it, he cried once, and again, if it comes to swinging, swing all, say I. Then all of a sudden, there was a tremendous explosion of oaths and other noises. The chair and the table went up over in a lump. A clash of steel followed, and then a cry of pain. And the next instant, I saw Black Dog in full flight, and the captain hotly pursuing both wind-drawn cutlasses and the former streaming blood from the left shoulder. Just at the door, the captain aimed at the fugitive one last tremendous cut, which would certainly have split him to the chine had it not been intercepted by our big signboard of Admiral Benbow. You may see the notch on the lower side of the frame to this day. That blow was the last of the battle. Once out upon the road, Black Dog, in spite of his wound, showed a wonderful clean pair of heels and disappeared over the edge of the hill in half a minute. The captain, for his part, stood staring at the signboard like a bewildered man. Then he passed his hand over his eyes several times and at last turned back into the house. Jim, says he, rum. And as he spoke, he healed a little and caught himself with one hand against the wall. Are you hurt? cried I. Rum, he repeated. I must get away from here. Rum, rum. I ran to fetch it but I was quite unsteady by all that had fallen out, and I broke one glass and fouled the tap, and while I was still getting in my own way, I heard a loud fall in the parlor, and running in, beheld the captain lying full length upon the floor. At that same instant, my mother, alarmed by the cries and fighting, came rowing downstairs to help me. Between us, we raised his head. He was breathing very loud and hard, but his eyes were closed and his face a horrible color. Dear, deary me, cried my mother, what a disgrace upon the house, and your poor father sick. In the meantime, we had no idea what to do to help the captain, nor any other thought, but that he had got his death hurt in the scuffle with the stranger. I got the rum, to be sure, and tried to put it down his throat. But his teeth were tightly shut, and his jaws as strong as iron. It was a happy relief for us when the door opened and Dr. Lucy came in on his visit to my father. Oh, doctor, we cried, what should we do? Where is he wounded? And so I'm going to leave it off there and we'll continue. If you have any criticism, comments, or um, like the story or dislike the story, let me know. Um, my pronunciation can be, I can put your words, but comment please down below. I'm totally welcoming it. And I uh, hope you continue to listen in to Treasure Island by Robert Lewis Stevenson. And thank you for listening.